really frightened you today? <laughs> I was like, I don't know if it's me or there's just a lot more lights on today. It's you. <laughs> so today is a special Sunday because we get to welcome two new members into the Christ Church UCC family. And that is Karen and Mandy. So Karen is returning to the family and Mandy uh, joined us first initially via social media. And so that's how she made a connection with us and she's been here almost a year. Uh, so, and we've been able to be there for her too in a couple of instances in her family life where it was difficult. So I'm glad that we as a Christchurch family were able to be there for her. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries, we only have one of each. Uh, my two-year-old will be three years old on Wednesday. And we have Andrea and Edward Chang who will celebrate their anniversary this week as well. Don't forget, next Sunday is the installation. Marks the official start of our journey together in ministry. Uh, Reverend Merck will be here and he will be our preacher as well. Um, Grace Henson uh, has COVID, so keep her in your prayers, and she's still uh, in uh, nursing, right? Nursing home. So keep her in her prayers, and then Paul Brodick, who used to be a member, uh, has been diagnosed with leukemia, so keep him in your prayers. Um, on the, and then also, those of you who do not use uh, electronics, don't receive email, uh, receive word that Jean Wadi Mahone passed away recently, so if you didn't get that email, I'm sharing that news with you um, as well. On the other side of that, the joy is that Dorothy will be coming home midweek from the nursing home, so continue to give your prayers towards her so that God can continue to help her heal, so um, I know it's a lot for Larry as well to, to handle, so in your prayers also, don't forget to mention the caregivers, because as you know, when you're a caregiver, that takes a big toll on you. So remember to uh, pray for the caregivers. Spaghetti dinner in February. Um, we still have letters out there in the comments. They no. should be. They could be. If you know of a business who is willing to donate or help out the Christian Ed Committee for the spaghetti dinner, please hand them one of the letters that is in the office so that they can contribute to that. And as well, just make sure that you keep your eyes open so whenever the ladies start selling their tickets, uh, you can buy some. And you're doing to go only or both? Both. Both. So it'll be up to you if you want to just come and pick up your plate and take it home or stay and eat with others. Any other announcements from anybody? No? Okay, let's start our week. Today we gather with the whole United Church of Christ in observing Health and Human Service Sunday. We bear witness to the faithful heritage the UCC has in creating spaces of wholeness with communities across the country and around the world. The UCC and its predecessor denominations courageously founded schools, hospitals, and orphanages. During these times of pandemic, war, and social upheaval, now there are more than 400 UCC affiliated healthcare centers, hospital, affordable housing, and retirement communities, transitional housing for those experiencing homelessness or domestic violence and service centers for children, youth, families, and those with developmental disabilities. These ministries continue to show up in the most challenging circumstances and do so with a career of healing and justice. It is thus a day to celebrate how the life of the church is vibrant beyond our walls and outreach ministries. So let us give thanks for this collect collective work of the Spirit let us uplift God's healers and equity weavers, visionaries of freedom and frontline responders, that together we may create a just, caring, and compassionate world. O God of flesh and bone, your word echoes deep 
within us and turns our heartbeat into a song. May we linger for a moment in this blessing. I invite you to rub your hands together and create some heat between them, bringing the life, the moment our Creator, the spark of all life, into your hands. Feel the heat you just created. Now place your hands on your chest. Feel the rhythm of your heartbeat. Notice the warmth you brought to your heart space. Take a deep breath. Simply feel yourself alive in this moment. Perhaps imagine your heart within the heart of Christ. Perhaps envision your ancestors at your back. How you have generations behind you. Now once again, rub your hands together and then open them. Feel the coolness of air caress them. The wind of the Spirit hover over them. May the blessing take shape in you and all that you hold. May you enter in silent prayer with an embodied awareness of God's sacredness within you. Please join me in a call to worship. O oh God of change and stillness, of wounds and with repair, in you we find our sense of God's place to man and to May we grow our attention towards that which gives life. And cultivate the connections of community and prayer. May grace touch all that changes us. gather in this place claiming healing as our birthright and, and bring with us the medicines of service and compassion on this health and human service sunday let us come together to transform ourselves to transform the world and move like a living water ever adapting ever faithful ever full of
please join me now in our prayer of reconciliation. O oh God of the coming, we claim ourselves as your beloved and name the messy reality of being human. In your presence, we do not shy away from our struggles, failings, or regrets. By your invitation, we come to you not in shame, but with courage, seeking right relationships with you, with ourselves, each other, and all of creation. Guide us in your ways of accountability, with remedies of repair and reconciliation. May our sense of self be vast enough for our faults and deep enough to let go, to make space to learn from our wrongdoing without spiraling into self-hate. Spirit of creation, teach us the grace of generative conflict, that we may be open to the tension underneath authentic connection. Help us to believe change is possible in ourselves and others, so our healing can ripple upwards and our shared power can break forth anew. now our assurance of grace fear not the great physician will tend to your needs fear not the contemplative counselor is ready open your mind eyes and heart for the spirit is ready to guide you rest for your parent caress you against their bosom allowing you to feel comfort peace and healing glory to god and now I invite everybody to stand in body or spirit and share a sign of peace by waving to each other.
Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. The Lord said, Jeremiah, I am your creator, and before you were born, I chose you to speak for me to the nations. I replied, I'm not a good speaker, Lord, and I'm not too young. Don't say you're not too young, the Lord answered. If I tell you to go and speak to someone, then go. And when I tell you what to say, don't leave out a word. I promise to be with you and keep you safe, so don't be afraid. The Lord reached out his hand, then he touched my mouth and said, I am giving you the words to say, and I am sending you with authority to speak to the nations for me. You will tell them of doom and destruction and of rising and rebuilding again. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Our second reading is from Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. What if I could speak all languages of humans and of angels? If I did not love others, I would be nothing more than a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. What if I could prophesy and understand all secrets and all knowledge? And what if I had faith that moved mountains? I would be nothing unless I loved others. What if I gave away all that I owned and let myself be burned alive? I would gain nothing unless I loved others. Love is kind and patient, never jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. Love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful, and trusting. Love never fails. Everyone who prophesies will stop, and unknown languages will no longer be spoken. All that we know will be forgotten. We don't know everything, and our prophecies are not complete. But what is perfect will someday appear, and what isn't perfect will then disappear. When we were children, we thought and reasoned as children do. But when we grew up, we quit our childish ways. Now all we can see of God is like a cloudy picture in a mirror. Later we will see him face to face. We don't know everything, but then we will. Just as God completely understands us, for now there are faith, hope, and love. But of these three, the greatest is love. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit for our Gospel reading this morning. According to Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. Then Jesus said to them, What you have just heard me read has come true today. All the people started talking about Jesus and were amazed at the wonderful things he said. They kept on saying, asking, Isn't he Joseph's son? Jesus answered, You will certainly want to tell me this saying, Doctor, first make yourself well. You will tell me to do the same things here in my own hometown that you heard I did in Capernaum. But you can be sure that no prophets are liked by the people of their own hometown. Once during the time of Elijah, there was no rain for three and a half years, and people everywhere were starving. There were many windows in Israel, but Elijah was sent only to a widow in the town of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. During the time of the prophet Elijah, many men in Israel had leprosy, but no one was healed except Nahum, who lived in Syria. When the people in the meeting place heard Jesus say this, they became so angry that they got up and threw him out of the town. They dragged him to the edge of the cliff on which the town was built, because they wanted to throw him down from there. But Jesus slipped through the crowd and got away. Here ends our gospel lesson. Let us not place a period where God has placed a comma. God is still speaking. I hope by now you have picked up on the message for today. That's love. Part, you heard it in music ministry, part of the lyrics, you heard it in the scripture, and you've heard it in some of the prayers. 
See, today's scripture, we pick up where we left off last Sunday. We talked about how some in Jesus' hometown may not have been too keen on calling him or on him calling them out. Now, as I was preparing for today, I struggled in how to convey a message to you. And part of that is because home is not necessarily where the heart is. And being prophetic does not guarantee that you will see that. We can imagine that when Jesus spoke in front of the synagogue, some people rejected his ideas for ministry. A part of a group and new fresh ideas have been rejected without giving it a second thought. How many times have someone you come to the table and said, hey, why don't we try this? And it's like, no, 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 that's not how we do it. Think about it. Now they have this guy coming up in front and saying, hey, this is what we should be doing. And just like any other congregation, even in today, God bless you. Some were probably not pleased. It's no different. Yes, people rejected him then and forsake him now. And I'm not talking about people who seek to walk away from God and do ill will to others. I'm not talking about that. Because the first thought is like, oh, it's those people that never go to church, don't think of God, blah, 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 blah. No. I'm talking about people who claim to follow Jesus, but choose to be heterosexual, the LGBTQ member. Jesus is, after all, males in power brought him to the cross. And in case you forgot, we read those sections in the Bible. Jesus, for everyone who listens to his prophetic message, is inclusion and love. Our society continues to be quick to judge without getting to know a person. Often we hear about how stories are thrown at some people's faces. Even the centurion uttered, surely this man was innocent. As Jesus was dying. How many times have you encountered something similar in life? Where you didn't believe it, you didn't support it, you're like, oh, maybe I should have. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Yes, we need to remember the role of the Old Testament, but as Christians, we have an obligation, we have a duty to pay close attention to the New Testament, where Jesus' voice is heard loud and clear. Think back, what was the role Jesus had then, and what does he have now? Think about that. Every time this nation or world experiences something traumatic, we are quick to bring on the prayers and thoughts. Something happens, oh, prayers and thoughts. But what is done beyond those words? After a point, those words are empty and meaningless. Does it bring stricter gun laws? Does it bring more awareness to mental illness? What happens when something rocks our world? And I'm not saying in the positive light where, ooh, yeah, that was awesome. Recall a couple of years ago, a young trans woman found herself feeling no heart at home. Home of a Christian values, according to her parents. She knew that she was not the gender she was assigned at birth as she grew up. She knew and felt trapped in knowing that her outside presentation did not meet her inside. No, she was not mentally ill, contrary to what some would say. Transgender and LGBTQ folks have been part of our humanity from the beginning of time. All you have to do is really look for them. All we must do is open our eyes did you know 
that the man anybody did a great thing during did a great thing for humanity for the outcome of a war a war that killed so many and started by an individual who murdered so many based on xenophobia and hate the Turing machine was the foundation of today's digital computer. He too found no heart in the country he called home. I recall a young girl about 14 years old who got pregnant. Instead of finding heart at home, she found violence. This young girl had already placed herself in an adult situation by getting pregnant. Home for her did not bring heart as it brought violence and abuse. Her mother did not set a good model. Her mother insisted on belittling her, mentally and physically abusing her, hoping that the child she was carrying would be aborted. Jesus was crucified because he spoke for others in the community. He did not follow through with the status quo. Now you're wondering, well, where's he going with this? I can see some of your eyes just puzzling. But think of those stories. What is missing in those stories? What is missing if you're a Christian and you're reflecting on a man, a Jewish man, as our Savior. What is missing from his message that we do not always live into? He did not follow the status quo, even though sometimes our society says, oh, Jesus did this. No, I don't know what as parents to love their own child. And that is something I will never understand, being adopted. My parents did not treat me as some of the stories we hear coming out of the news, where parents dispose of their children like yesterday's garbage. Their lack of modeling love for a child of God drove this child to die by suicide. I won't share the details of that. But think, how much harm, how much pain did that young woman feel to die by suicide? To be in a Christian home and choose death over living there. For Alan Turing, though he helped the outcome of World War II, and contributed to things in the modern world, he was chemically castrated. Now, did any of you know that part? You only hear the positive stuff that he contributed. You see, when he reported someone for a burglary, he was in question as to the relationship with this person. And it was determined he would have been in a same-sex relationship with this person. He was found guilty, and he had a choice to either go to jail or get castrated. Think of what he did for humanity. And that is how he was treated. For one thing, him loving him another person outside of the norms. He too would die by suicide shortly after being found guilty of having that romantic relationship. He found no love in that country that he did so much for, in humanity that he did so much for. How is that Christian love? As for the 14-year-old girl, she moved to live with her grandparents 
who would provide a better environment. Though the environment was not enough to keep her heart at home, many things led her to have a complicated life well into adulthood. What we can learn from her are two things, resistance and determination. These three stories are few compared to those you have yet to hear or know. For some people listening to these stories will allow them to neglect what people live day in day out. Some may tune these stories out or grow tired of hearing them, so their privilege allows them to tune it out. It is no different from a young person to say, oh, I don't want to hear about the old people again. I don't care about their problems. Or for a man to say, I don't want to hear about women's problems. It's no different. It is that privilege that we carry, because we all carry a sort of privilege. See, what qualities did Jesus carry those 2,000 years ago? He was resilient. He was determined to create a better life for people. He lived by love. He knew where he was going, yet he still loved people. He knew what would be the end result in his life, yet he chose to do nothing different. When you are resistant to the norms that humanity places on others above God's, you are working against those qualities that Jesus made clear is what brings you closer to God. So if we are doing, no, this is how we do it, no, that is not right, and we are forgetting the message of God and Christ, we are working against. How are you? How are we? How is Christ Church UCC called to bring hope, comfort, and peace to others through love? And allowing them to feel at home. Obviously, Karen and Mandy have felt at home. They have felt the love from this congregation. Otherwise, they would not be ready to become members today. So you have to look in the mirror and say, okay, what are we doing to where we grab two people to become part of our family? But we also have to look in the mirror and see where can I grow? Because I firmly believe, even to your last dying breath, you can grow. I know that bringing those things to others means that I help provide a heart in the center of God's home, our church universal. Siblings, will you work with me? Jesus is knocking at the door, asking us to welcome all into this house with open hearts, open minds, and open arms. Let us show them love, because that is the greatest commandment, is to love each other. Amen. to the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence the conventional relationship with Christ and the members of the, of the church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestowed. They are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone, in whom structure is joined together and grows into the holy temple of Christ, in whom you also are built into it for the dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Karen and Mandy, do you desire to affirm your baptism 
into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grave of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Do you promise according to the grave given you to grow in the Christian faith and to be faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world. Let us unite with the Church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the treaty of God. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in the true man of Jesus, to reconcile and make you, who works in us and others by his spirit. We trust him, he calls us to be his church, to celebrate his presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and receive evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the Church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of the family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world. Let us, the members of Christ Church, United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses for our risen Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of Christ Church, United Church of Christ, we extend to you the hat of Christian love Welcome you into the company of this local church. O oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen.
collapse into your arms to be held, to be lifted, to be known in our wholeness. May we rest in the alignment of this moment, in the abundance of you and our right to belong. Our liberator of loneliness, who cuts down privilege and recenters the margins, you have shown us how to be free is to be loved, because there is the strength, the invulnerability, and wisdom and intimacy. To be free is to be loved, as white blood cells rally to a cut and mushrooms cleanse the forest ground, to be free is to be beloved. Like a midwife who catches a baby and the chaplain who sits with the dying, to be free is to be beloved. Because we are found in the web that lifts us, not the bootstraps that bind us down. To be free is to be beloved. Where the city of God is irresistible and its sweetness of justice satisfies. To be free is to be beloved. Because resurrections never go unwitnessed and they heal the broken heart. To be free is to be beloved. As species with needs and offerings who give and receive alike, we are not meant to live this life alone. So let us hold fast to our God in between us, to the collective of care alongside us today. Great physician, come, be at our side, and help us care for each other as we now pray in the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In 1858, one of our UCC forebearers, Pastor Louis Edward Knoll, appealed to his congregation known as St. Peter's United Church of Christ in St. Louis for money to build a home to support young children orphaned by great cholera epidemic. Later, one member chastised Nola, insisting the church did not have enough funds for such an ambitious project. To this, the pastor replied, no, but we have children. Today, Pastor Nola's vision, Evangelical Children's Home, is more than 150 years old and has always evolved and adapted to meet the changing needs of children. Now referred to as Every Child's Hope, has nearly 200 employees across Missouri dedicated to preventing child abuse, treating emotional trauma and mental health issues, providing critical services to 1,400 youth and children annually. In our need, as members of the United Church of Christ, Pastor Nola's dream and the dream of the generous people of St. Peter's Church lives on. So today, as you remember that your donations always go to continue the ministry of your church, Christ Church, remember to give so generously. Join me in today's offertory of living. O oh God of loaves and fishes, of bread and wine, we bring before you our diversity of gifts. O oh God of resurrection, who makes all things new, accept our offering to both give and receive. Beloved, we have claimed our place in the ecosystem of the Spirit, alive, connected, and emerging with grace. Let us go forth from this fertile ground, ripening the wisdom we have found through justice, care, compassion, and love. And so, may the blessing of our communal creator replenish you today and always. <laughs> 